Go ahead. Right, that's right. Let go me ahead. blow the sofa. Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Is he blowing it? <laughs> that was a quiet one. Is it? Is it? It's not that loud. It's not loud, right? Oh, you, you didn't, didn't hear it at all. Yeah, we didn't hear it. Do you hear it over there? Oh, you did. When I when you, it. but when you blow your shofar, Shadullah, it does the same thing for us. It's probably just too much for whatever computer that's trying to. Pick oh, up. Okay, 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 okay. No wonder. No yeah. wonder. Okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. At least I, I blew it. You can see it in my hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, my sister, go ahead and shema for us. Well, I asked Sister Shannon to sing us a song. I need at least one more week. Okay. Okay. At least okay. One. I'm, my I'm sister. Back to normal. I'm not a hunt. I'm. I'm like. I'm like at about 90, 95%, but so by the next time, I should be 100% to where I feel comfortable and I know that a vessel will not, you know, be agitated. Okay. So okay. I've asked this to Shannon and to go ahead and bless us with a song for us. Oh, okay. So Sasha, please. can you please bless on this song? Yes. yes. You called me out upon the waters, the great unknown, for feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep. My faith will stand, and I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me. You've never failed, and you won't start now. So I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Oh. Oh. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. I would love to see both of y'all have a duet. If that call it, that's when two people. We're going to work <laughs> on it. No problem. Yeah. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Abba, Abba is bringing uh, um, those who will use their voice to praise him. He's bringing them, he's gathering them together. We are set apart people. See, the, according to that song, it said, um, we belong to him. Okay? We are his. We are his people, right? Hallelujah. We are his people. So we belong to him and he belongs to us. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Brother Anderson, can you please pray for us so that we can go right away into Torah study today? I mean, Shabbat. Uh, Story. Very well. I have a father of the most high to create of all things, our only begotten son, you Hushua Hamashiach. We just give thanks for your love, your mercy, and your compassion. Giving thanks for your patience, your long suffering. Just giving thanks for your presence, for abiding and being with us. And I'm just giving thanks for this moment you had given us that we may have fellowship one with another and that your word to be in the midst and the power of your might may be in the midst and your holy counsel may be in the midst as you will guide us to all truth, that your wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding will be given like manner and that we may forevermore be edified according to your word of truth. Be gracious and merciful unto us with your everlasting love and your kindness, meekness, and your joy and your peace and righteousness and your holiness and your everlasting love. Continues to guide us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, that we turn not to the left nor to the right. That when it goes straight forward to the route, that may hear for itself your voice and be obedient to those your word and your word of truth. We just give gracious and for being gracious and just giving thanks for your mercy that endureth forever and your kindness like manner as well. And I pray that your presence will be with those that are not here with us that are seeking your word of righteousness and your holiness and your everlasting love. So let our words and that which you give us to go on to those that are not present with us, that they may hear for of your goodness and your grace and your everlasting love that you have spread abroad in the whole world thereof, that they may take heed of your goodness and your everlasting life. And we just give thanks and honor to thee for these blessings, that we may be a blessing unto thee in righteousness, holiness, and love for thee. And these things I pray, Yahushua HaMashiach, in the holy and righteous name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I welcome you all to this um, week, uh, Torah portion. And I think this is our last uh, Torah portion for the uh, the book of Bereshit. It's our last Torah portion for the book of uh, Bereshit. And um, I'm so excited for right from the, the creation, um, right from the creation up to Yosef, it has been an exciting and a remarkable um um Torah portion studies stories that uh, actually um uh, impact in our lives and that is our story see i want us to know that this story is our story it's our story uh these characters are our characters okay these individuals our forefathers so i'm so excited you know when Abba created the Shamayim, the, the fall of Adam, the destruction of the whole world because they did not guide the commandment of Abba. They were disobedient to when Abba set aside Abraham, called him out of his world, out of darkness into his marvelous light, just like the way he called you and me out of our ways. Even though his hand has been in our lives, but we don't know until when that time comes, when he say, my children, my daughters, my sons, come out of the world, come out of them and, and, and you know, go my way. 
get out of the way of the world and be in my way. So the same thing, um, Abraham then goes to Yisak. Um, Abba, we have seen that Abraham guided the commandment of Abba. He guided the commandment of Abba. He told Yisak, Yisak, don't go to Misraim. You see, why did Abba later allow Yaakov to go into Misraim? We have seen it, but he told his son, Yisak, don't go into Misraim. Stay right in there. Okay. I'm going to barack you. I'm going to, I'm going to bless you. He established his oath that he made with Abraham in Yisak. I'm going to barack you. I'm going to bless you. And he said, I love that. And I know my sister Chanel, um, she knows that I love that, that portion of the scripture. Because Abraham guided, he guided my, he, Abraham hacking to my voice and he guided my um, commandments, my laws, my Torah. He guided my Torah. Stay here, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to barack you. You will be a blessing. And we knew how, what happened to um, Yisak after he married Rebecca. No issue, you know. Then Rivka asked her husband, pray. Praise that Abba may open my womb. He obliged his wife. He, his wife. He prayed and Abba ob, uh, opened her womb. Not to find out that there are two nations that are fighting inside her. The seed of the bad seed and the good seed. Okay. Esau and Yaakov. And, and we saw the journey of Yaakov. You know, when after taking over the birthright of his brother, how his brother plot to kill him, that was leaked to their mom. And the mom said, you go and stay. Go to uh, your uncle, Leban. And when he got to his uncle place, Leban, he eventually married uh, two sisters, two women. Rahel and uh, Leah, Leah and Rahel. Okay, but Leah was despised. Leah was hated because um, that was not Yaakov want. But then Abba saw the heart of Leah and closed the womb of, of, of Rachel and um, Leah started having children. Reuben, uh, Simon, Lou, Yehuda, and so forth and so on. And that is how, you know, it goes to Yosef. It goes to Yosef. So this, this Torah portion is so exciting because the closing Torah portion for the, uh, the Bereshit. Um, and I'm I'm, I'm so I, I know that you are going to be uh, richly blessed as you as we study together this Torah portion. And I know this Torah portion is all over the world. It's read and studied all over the world. And what is the the the, the Torah portion? What is the theme that we have? Vayeki, Vayeki, in Hebrew. Vaiki and he leave. Our Torah portion today is Vaiki. The topic is Vaiki and he leave. And he leave. And Yaakov leave Vaiki in the land of Misraim, Egypt for 17 years, so that the day of Yaakov, the years of his life were 147 years. We are going to go right in into um, Bereshit 47, 47, 47. Let's go quickly go to Bereshit 47. We are going to 347, not 
not not in its entirety 47 48 49 um sister shadola can you read we are going to read uh can you read from verse one to and see how many okay sister shadola you read from verse one to eleven then sister shannon you will read from uh verse 12 to um to 2022 no read from, from to 23 then brother anderson will read from 20, verse 24 to the end The floor is, I yield the floor to you, Sister Shadula. Then Yosef went and spoke to Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their herds, and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. And see, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, we have come to dwell in the land because there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the scarcity of food is severe in the land of Canaan. And now, please, let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke to Yosef, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Mitzrayim is before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know of capable men among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. And Yosef brought in his father, Yaakov, and stood him before Pharaoh. And Yaakov brought Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Yaakov, how many are the days of your life? And Yaakov said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my sore journey are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not reached the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their sore journeys. And Yaakov Barak Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. You're on mute. Are you on mute? Okay. Mabe. Uh, and Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished, nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money to Pharaoh's house. And when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? for the money faileth. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with the bread of all their cattle for that year. And when that year was ended, they came 
unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my master. How that our money is spent, my master oh, also has our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my master, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed, that we may live and not die, and the land, and the land not be desolate. And Joseph brought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portions which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day, and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it came to pass that the end creed, that it shall give on the third part of Pharaoh, and the fourth part shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your household, and for the food were the little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives, and let us feel grace in the sight of thy Elohim. And we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over all the land of Egypt until this day that Pharaoh should give the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt and in the country of the Goshen, and they possessed therein, and they grew, and they multiplied exceedingly. And Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt seven years, and the whole age of Yaakov was 140 and seven years. And the time and the night in Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, If now I found grace in thy sight, I pray thee, thy hand under thy thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. Hold on for a moment. But I will lie with my father, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. And I said, I will do as I have said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he sware unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed head. Hallelujah. Uh, last week's study, we knew that Yosef revealed his identity to his brothers and he invited them as well as his father. He made himself known to his brothers. He reunited with his brothers, his family, and he invited them to the land of Misraim. So in order for him to be a provider, to be able to provide for them during the famine. So Yosef, his brother and his father were joyfully, joyfully reunited and they reconciled. We saw how that happened in our study last week. He reunited with his brothers, you know, they reconciled. He was so excited to bring in his father, not only that, but to preserve life, because he said that he told his brothers, what you did to me is not you, but it was Abba that allowed you to do this to me so that I can preserve life for you. And we saw that in um, 47, Yosef was a very brilliant, and a competent administrator. He organized, not only did he gather, you know, the, 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 the fruit of the land to the burnt house for Pharaoh, 
but also he devised means to make sure that these people will come to Pharaoh, to the pool, house of food. After they must have finished what they got. And that is what they did. When they finished the food that they had, and there was nothing, and the family was so severe, extremely too severe. And they came to Yosef. Listen, we cannot hold on to the land. They have all the properties. They have all the everything. They said, we cannot hold on to this. We need food. Look, see, we have to understand this place very well. Misraim is a microscope of what we come in, what is coming to the world. The time of famine is coming. We, also, we saw what happened during COVID-19. We saw how, you know, food was actually begin to get scarce. If you watch TV that time, you watch CNN, you see how people lie, you know, um, um, waiting for food. Because there was no food, out, the chain of supply was hoarded. People have to actually um, uh, be on the line for them to be able to get food to feed their family. That time is coming, it's still coming. So let us prepare it that we have to plan to start, you know, a land, to get a land where we can, we can grow our own food. We can plant our own food. Let's work together as a team, as a brothers and sisters, because the perilous time is coming, the dangerous time is coming, the time of famine is coming to the world. Egypt, Misraim is a macro microscope of what will later happen in the world. The same thing, this is what happened. But then, Abba always make way when there is no way. He sent his son, Yosef, ahead of his family so that they will not be consumed by the famine. Our deliverer is coming. Yahusha Hamashiach, who will make provisions for us. We have to look at what is happening at that time for us to see what is happening in our world today. The system, the global economy, the global system, the global system started in the 80s, globalism, although they've been doing that. And the, the globalism simply means the control of human resources, the control of food production, the control of energy, the control of everything. We are gradually approaching that time. Yosef provided for his family because Abba have seen what is coming. So he became a powerful administrator in the land of Misraim. He organized um, the, the government of Misraim so that he will be able to make provisions for his own family. And we have seen that it is only the grant of the priests that Joseph did not buy. Because the priests have their allotment, their portion from uh, the Pharaoh himself. And they ate their allotment with Pharaoh. The priests hold. The paganistic priests hold. And Yusuf said to the people, look, I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. He even bought the seed land 
He even bought the seed from them. So he has to give them the seed for them to sow because he got the land already. All the land of Mishraim is now fully in the hands of Pharaoh. It's no longer their land. So they have to work for Pharaoh. So if you walk, you have the whole food. We are for Pharaoh is going to take certain percentage from that food and the remaining belongs to you. He said you shall give one fifth to Pharaoh. One fifth, one foot, one, one and, and four feet is your own. As a seed for the feed and for your food. For those you for those of your household, and as for food for your little ones. You see what is happening in the world today. The world is going cashless. The, the, a lot of things are taken away so that we, we, the world will come to a stage where they have to rely on the system. It's happened here. We have seen it. People are on different kind of programs. And this program is designed to control, to take full control of people. If you are on on certain section of the program, there are certain things you cannot do. The government monitor you because they they they, they pay for your rent. They give you food. You see it. The whole thing is becoming glaring and glaring every day. is 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 so clear, and that is what happened in the land of Misraim. And they, they were so happy, just like what we are going to say today, when government give us something. Oh, you save our life. Let us find favor in, your, in, our, in, in, in the eyes of our oppressors, our masters, and we shall become Pharaoh's servants. We are, we are gradually approaching that stage, my brother and sisters. Read and listen to what is happening in the world today you will see that it's not different from what is what, what was obtained in the time of Yosef. It is it is it is in the, it is individual that have the control of means of productions that control people. If you don't have the means of productions, you cannot control anybody. As, as a matter of fact, you are going to be con you are going to be controlled. And today, people are ready to give in everything. You know, the atmosphere is so clear today that if the anti messiah if that individual called anti messiah appear today, willingly, willingly, people will submit their life to him. Because it is happening right there in our eyes. The government has come up with the different programs in all over the world to control people and to take absolute control of their lives. You know, that was one of the problem, reason that that was one of the problem in that causes the the, the first and the second world war. Because the the Jew, the Jew in 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 um, in Germany, reduced the Germans to 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 nothing. The Jew bought over all the resources of Germans. These are historical facts. The Germans has nothing. They don't have anything. The 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 Germans mark was reduced to nothing was so devalued that it become useless that one dollar american dollar at that time one american dollar at that time will give you one million uh, uh, uh german mark one mil one dollar a dollar will give you one million german mark that is what actually caused the pen feelings Against the Jew in German, the Jew were not killed because of Torah. No. And the world is gradually approaching that time now, my brother and sisters. 
we must find way to get to the land. We must find a way to have our own land, to eat our food. And Yosef made it a law over the land of Mizraim to this day that Pharaoh should have one feet. You see it? That's like they took so much from us. We will work. The system is designed for us to work and pay our bills. It is not designed for you and me to be rich. Okay. Now I was listening to a brother who was trying to analyze. He was who he was talking about how you can, how you can, um, how you can, how you can, how, how you can get rich. And he said that the poor, the poor, when they get the money, the money don't stay in their hands. The middle class, when the middle class get the money, he will, he will, he will try to maintain his or her credit. He will not do any investment, but to make sure that his credit or her credit is okay so that he can get a house not to save money so every money that a middle class save he will give it back if you save twenty dollars hundred dollars i mean twenty thousand us dollars hundred thousand us dollars all kinds of money he will give it back to the system but the rich who understand the money game they will uh, they will be looking for how to invest that money They, they will want to impregnate that money so that he can give them more babies. I'm sure you understand what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying. Yes, they want to impregnate that money to give them more babies. We, we, it is a time that we have to reflect and think of what is happening in our world today. He made it a law in the land of Mizraim to this day that Pharaoh should have one fifth, except for the grand of the priest, only which he did not be, become Pharaoh. And Israel dwell in the land of Mizraim, in the land of Goshen, and they have possession there and bore fruit and increase exceedingly. Now, let me, why did Yosef? gave the best of the land in the land of Misraim to his own people. Because Goshen was the fruit of the land. The, the, the land is it, it, it's a futuristic of where Abba was taking the children of Israel to, where Abba is taking us to. The land of Goshen was a blessed land. Just like the land of Israel. So you have to look at the picture, look at the, look at the bigger picture of this verse that Israel dwell in the land of Misraim, in the land of Goshen. Misraim represent the world. Misraim represent the world, the world that I, you and I live in. Misraim represent the Babylon. But out of this Babylon, a separate land that was cut out for his own people, a rich land. This land for shadow, this land for shadow Shamayim, for shadow the new Jerusalem. Goshen for, for shadow the, the new Jerusalem is a prototype of the land of Israel. They were kept in the most beautiful land 
the most Baruch land, the land that flow with honey and milk. That was Goshen. That was where Jacob stayed. He was not mingled with his world. He was not mingled. Jacob was not mingled with a paganistic society of Misraim. My brother and sisters, we are living in a paganistic, we are surrounded by pagan system, government, occultic system. Look at the, the, the names of our months. Look at the names of our weeks. Look at the, we are surrounded by paganism up to the food that, that we eat. The car that we drive. Do we know the names of those cars that we drive? These are the name of pagan, the name of deities. Toyota, mention them. What about the drinks? The wine that we love. Most of these one names are uh, the names of deities. Because, but we have to be separate. We have to live distinctively. We must not join ourselves to the world in all forms. And Jacob Lee, so that is where our Torah portion came from. Vayehi and Jacob Lee. In the land of Misraim, 17 years of his life he, that, that was added to his life. And 47 years, 147 years. And the time of Yaakov to die drew near. And he called his soldiers and said to him, Now, if I find favor in your eyes, please put your hand under my tie. We are going to talk about tie. Put your hand under my tie. What is the meaning of tie? What does it represent? The meaning of tie is the part of the lower limbs in human between the hip and the nail. The part of the leg that extends from the hips to the nail. That is our tie. It is the most sacred place in our body the most affectionate place in our body. Hand. Yarek in Hebrew. Yarek. Y-A-R-E-H, I mean K-H, Yarek. In Aramaic, it's called ya, Yareha. Let's see Daniel, the book of Daniel. Can somebody read the book of Daniel, chapter 2? When you find it, just read it. Daniel, chapter 2, 30, 32. Yes, if you find it, read it, please. This image's head was a fire gold, fine gold. Its chest and arms of silver, its abdomen and thighs of bronze. Do you hear that? The thighs are the most powerful part of our body. Because it closed directly to our heart. It means so much to a woman and also to a man. The time were taught to, to play a part in procreation. Let's read 
Bereshit 46, 26. Sister Shannon, read Bereshit 46, 26. And it says, all the souls that came with Jacob to Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's son's wives, all the souls were all the souls were three score and six. Hallelujah. It, it, it's supposed to be being. The being. All the being who went with Yaakov. That is to say that. All the people that came out from his time. The human that left Canaan, that came from Yaku. So it was so powerful when Yaku was asking him, was, was actually asking Yosef to do that. We are going to see an example of that. Can we read Bereshit 24, verse 2? Sister Shadola, can you read Bereshit 24, verse 2? And Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who yes. ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh. So that I Put may your hand. Go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to complete it out. So that okay, I okay. may so that I make you swear by Yahweh, the Elohim of the Shamaim and the Elohim of the earth, that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Hallelujah. Verse 29. And the time for Israel to die. See, time has to do also with death. Abraham was also preparing to die. He called his son Joseph and said to him, Now, if I have found favor in your eyes, please put your hand under my tie and show kindness and truth to me. Please do not bury me. In Israel, he made him to swear an oath. The you know to take an oath. Now the times were taught to be a play, to be a play, a part in procreation, so that an oath, listen, so that an oath taken with the hand on that time was taken by life power. Any oath that is taken that. Is a love power. That is to say that it's something that you have to do forever. It's something that cannot be broken. If you if you mess it up, you are finished. That was the oath that Yaku subject his son to. Because Yaakov did not forget the land of Israel. He did not forget the land Abba made a promise to him. He was not carried away by the glamour of Misraim. He was not carried away by the paraphernalia, you know, of office of his son. He was not carried away by the beauty of Misraim at that time because <coughs> there was no nation that was as powerful and as economically stable at that time like Misraim. No nation. There was no, there was no nothing called Europe, no America. That these are just modern. So he has to subjected Yosef, being the governor, being the head of his children at that time, to say, listen, my son. You must not bury me in this land. When I die, you must not bury me 
in the land of even even in Goshen. He told him, "You have to make this this promise and bury me. Take me to his to uh, the land that was promised to me, where my father slept, my fathers Abraham, Isaac." The rabbis, the rabbis interpreted that to mean by the seal of circumcision. That is what that is how the rabbi interpreted it. You remember that the first covenant, the enduring and everlasting covenant Yahweh made with yes uh, with Abraham was circumcision. And you know what that meant? All your male children are to be circumcised. So that was how powerful, you know, that oath, Yaakov was subjecting uh, Yosef to. It's a life power. When, when I die, you must not bury me in Mizraim, but I shall lie with my fathers and you shall take me up out of Mizraim and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I do as you have said, because he made, he also made him to swear to him. And he swore to him and Israel bowed himself. He did not die. He just bowed himself. He didn't die. You see how powerful time is. You see, we we of mod modernity, we have no idea. We play with that kind of a thing recklessly. We do, we have no idea what that meant. We do, don't appreciate the fact that that is our power. When you allow somebody who does not want anything to touch it appropriately, inappropriately, we don't know. Because here, love resided. He made him to swear an oath. Don't bury me in this land. Take me back to the land of my fathers. Every true Israelite, every seed of Yaakov, every seed of Abraham must always think about the land of Israel. It is the land. Abba is not dealing with, you know, the canker worms that are there. No, it's the land. Take me to the land. Don't forget there are people also in the land of. Uh, in the land of uh, Canaan at that time, the Hittites, the Jebusite. But because time will come when Abba will wipe them, it will just like he did to, to, um, to them when he was taking his people out of the land of Mizraim. That time is coming too. It's going to replace them and replicate because what were the scriptures said? He said, the land of Israel is going to be trampled upon by the Gentiles. The Gentiles are now in that land. So let us be conscious that it is the land. It is not the people that occupy it. The land is spiritual because the land brings life. Everything that you see that existed today is from the land. The money that turned to paper you spent is from the land. Everything, mention it. So the same land we go to. So Jacob said, don't bury me in the pagan land. Take me back to the land and bury me there because that is the promised land. Are you 
waiting for the promised land? Am I waiting for the promised land? Yahushua is coming, the new Jerusalem. This land, the land of Israel, is going to be clear out. See, everything that is happening right there explain the future to us. It explains the future to us. Let us have it in our mind all the time, the land of Israel. Because that is the land of righteousness. That is the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. He made his son to swear by his time. This is the time that I brought you from. This is where I gave you life. You swear by me by your life. That's what he's telling him. Swear by me by your life. That you will not bury me in the land. Let's go to 48. Let's go to 48. Sister um Sister Shannon, read from read from verse one to let me see. Okay, read from verse one to seven or to eight. Read from verse one to eight. Okay. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, Yah Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make thee, I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into the land into Egypt, are mine as Reuben. In Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, thou shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was a little way to come unto Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethel, Bethlehem. And in Israel beheld Joseph's son and said, Who are these? Okay. Brother Anderson, read from uh, 9, verse 9 to, to um, 17. And Joseph said unto the father, They are my sons, whom Elohim have given me unto this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel was dim for age, so that he could not see, and he brought them near unto him. And he kissed them, and he embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, Elohim has showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knee, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim and the right hand, and toward Israel, the left hand, and Manasseh says, in his left hand, towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched forth out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, whom was the youngest, and his left hand upon Madison. 
had got in his hand wittily, for Madison was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and he said, Elohim, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the Elohim in which fed me all my life long unto this day. Um, and the angels which redeem me from the evil, bless, bless the lad, and let the name of the name of them and the name of my father Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into the multitude of the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand and removed it from Ephraim's head onto Mattis's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be a, a great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of the nations. Sister Shadullah. Yes, read from where Brother doesn't stop. I complete it. And he brought them on that day, saying, In you, Israel, shall Barak, saying, Elohim make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. Thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said to Yosef, See, I am dying. But Elohim shall be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. And I, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yaakov, we seen here that Yaakov, blesses Ephraim and Manasseh. Don't forget. Yaakov, it was time for him to die. After he had made his son Yosef to swear an oath that when he died, he would take him back to the land of um, his fathers. Now, after that interaction with his father, Yaakov actually bowed down his head. He wasn't, you know, dead because he still had a function to perform before he leave. And it was, he was on this bed when information got to him that Yosef was coming to see him. He strengthened himself. You know, he revived his spirit and strengthened himself to sit down for him to be able to have a conversation with his son, Yosef. So you have to remember that we go back to Yosef, our dream. When his brother were jealous of him, the second one was a father Jacob made a pronouncement. He said, Is me and your mom, your mom will also bow down to you? But he never threw away the word of Yosef. The scripture said he kept it in his heart and he heart. He was thinking about it. Now that dreams has come to pass. Yosef is now the leader of Mizraim, not only the leader of Mizraim, but the leader of his brothers. So, Yaakov, attention moved away completely from um, his first son, Reuben. Because the mantle of leadership has now fell into the hands of Yosef. 
He was their provider, defender, and their protector. Just like Yahusha was, I mean, Yahusha is to us. Yaakov now said, he strengthened himself. And when he was called, and that is just the tradition, even it, it happened this level. I remember now in those days, if you have your, your, your parent, if they are very old, you want to take your children along with them, along with you to, to say hello to your father or to your mama. So and that is what um, Yosef did. He took his two sons to his father. And when Yaakub saw Yosef, he said to him, El Shaddai appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and barak me and said to me, see, I'm making you bear fruit and shall increase you and make you and make of you an assembly of peoples and give this land to your seed after you as an everlasting possession. Yaakub reestablished or reconfirmed the word of Abba, what Abba told him to his son, Yosef, was reminding him, we don't have that any longer. Where our parents will tell us the history. You know, they will tell us the story of the land, of their lives, of their forefathers. They want to, they want, they want to put this in you. First of all, to establish you, to know who you are. You don't have that any longer. Because when a child or children doesn't know who they are, they tend to misbehave. So that is how we were brought up. Our father, we relate you know, the history that was related to them by their father, they will relate that the same thing to us, just like it's just like that. It's continual like that you see that your children. Because from there, the children learn two most powerful things in life. One, they know who they are first. They know where they are coming from, their background. So that is what Jacob did. He said, he established the covenant Abba made with him, not only to him, to his fathers, and retold Yosef. And now, your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Israel before I came to you in Israel, are mine. You know what he did? You remember that Reuben, Reuben, and we will come back to that. By virtue of being the first son, Reuben has the right of inheritance. By virtue of first son. But Reuben was blinded by power. And I'm, I, I will come to that. So when you go in into your father's wife, not your mama now, your father's wife, according to, to according to tradition, what you are what you are doing is basically you want to take you it's what they call coup d'etat. It's coup d'etat. You want to dethrone your father. So Jacob remembered that and he said, look, your two sons that you have in the land of Mizraim, they are mine. So what he did basically was to replace these children with Reuben and Saint Simeon. That's what he did. He replaced them. 
he took them over. Don't forget that they are Yosef, children. So, and he said to them, your offering whom you shall bring forth after them are yours. And let me be called, let them be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. Do you hear, even though we knew that Yosef must have had other children, but you don't hear anything about them. Do you hear anything about them? Scripture did not talk. He said, even those the children that Yosef will bear, we, they will lose their names. They will be called by the names of their brothers who are now. You see, he elevated <laughs> his he elevated his grandchildren to the level of his children. That is what Jacob did. He elevated Ephraim and Manasseh to the level of his own children because he has cleverly replaced um, Reuben and Simeon because of their sin, because of what they did. We have to be very, very careful, but dear brother and sister, if you have, let us continue to respect our mama and our father. Please. You see, whatever they utter, that is why America is what it is today, because a lot of our mother have said something and our father have said something that is inimical to our lives. And that is what you have. You have children who are beating up their mom, who are beating up their dad. That's a cause. Whenever, whatever that woman say at that particular point, when you raise up your hand like that to her, you cannot escape it. So Jacob, cleverly, even though did not even let Yosef know what he's going to do, but he told Yosef that, you know, the children have elevated them to the same level as you are and your brothers. And he said, and, and I, when I came from Padan Rahel, I mean, when I came from Padan, Rahel, that is the mom, died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephraim. She was just telling Yosef what happened. And Israel saw Yosef's son and said, who are these? Don't forget, he has not seen them at that time. He just knew that he has two children because he told them and he always made up his mind of what he's going to do. And Yosef said to his father, they are my son whom Elohim has given me in this place and he said please bring them to me and let me barrack them please bring them to me let them come to me and let me barrack them let me seal it what i said to you now i want to seal it right in there i want to replace it and i will seal them and the eyes of you know what don't, don't forget his wife his eyes was dim but the ruach in him was very very clear you you can now see the deception that is going on in the world with the ruach of speaking tongues and all this nonsense that is going on see every action of use uh, of yaku is by ruach hakodesh nothing that was done on his own and he said bring them let Bring them to me. Let them get close to me. I remember when we are young at that time, the grandpapa want to put you in his time and he start saying blessings to your life. We don't have that anymore. Let them get close to me. Let them feel me so that I can bless them. I can, I can, let it seem let me let let me demonstrate this to you that when he said bring them close to me what he was saying is that just like you guys came out of me so also your children will be born will come out of me and they will become mine that was the meaning of it and he said 
He kissed them and he embraced them. And Jesus said to Jesus, I have, I have not thought to see your face, but see, Elohim has shown me your seed. Elohim has shown me the goodness. As Jacob near his death, Yusuf brought his two sons before his father for blessing. And he said, who are these? They are my son, he said. And when you say, I mean, when Yaakov saw these two boys, he did not think of anything. He thought of the goodness of Abba in his life because he never expected that anything would come out from Yosef. He never experienced, thought about that. But here, not only seeing Yosef, hallelujah, but he's now seeing the seed that proceeded out of Yosef. You remember when his brother brought out, brought the coat to him. And he lost hope completely that Yosef will never, he will never see Yosef again. But now, look at how Elohim, the lesson I want us to learn from here is that don't ever lose hope about anything in life do not lose hope and like him belongs to you and yahweh is a trustworthy like him don't lose hope no matter how terrible things may be right now no matter how terrible the challenges may be right now the, no matter how terrible the challenges that are coming may be or if abba made promise to you don't ever lose hope that it's not going to come to pass he will bring it to pass always think about the goodness of abba don't look at it don't don't turn your face to what you are going through remember here yaakov did not turn his face to what he's going through he now said to his son and never, never, never think in life of seeing your face again. But not only me seeing your face now, but your sons. So Jacob was approaching the end of his life. And Jacob praised Yahuwah for his exceedingly abundant goodness. Despite having experienced many difficulties and trials. Yaakub never focused on negative. He never looked at his trials and tribulations, just like his son, Yosef. Yosef never remember what his brother did to him. Even though his brother had it in mind that he's going to revenge, but he never think about that. He thought about the goodness of Abba. Here was a slave boy who now became the governor, the administrator, the, the, the um, executive president of Mishraim. So Yaakov never dwelt in his, and we knew that he, he experienced um difficulties trials tribulations he experienced that we, we all know that but he never dwelt in them instead he focused on the goodness of abba in his life so elohim goodness not only met but also exceeded his expectations Elohim belongs, esteem belongs to Elohim, whose power is at work in us. By this power, we can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Let's read Ephesians 3.20. Sister Shannon, can you read Ephesians 3.20 for us? All right, and it says, 
Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that is why we should focus our mind to him. You know, Elohim goodness not only made, but exceeded his expectation. So that is what we should focus that Abba is able to do more abundantly for what whatever that we are you know experiencing or we might have going going through so yaku bless yourself son ephraim and manasseh he blessed them he baruch them but in a surprise move he put his right hand on ephraim and was who was the younger and his left on Manashe, who was the firstborn and should have rightfully received and primarily blessings. Manashe was the first son who was actually deserved the right of um, inheritance. But he turned it over, did like this. You see, and that, that brought us back to the life of his grandfather. Okay, don't forget that uh, Ishmael was the firstborn, right? But Abba did not choose Ishmael. Ishmael was Baruch, but in in Yisak, the name of Abraham was you know pronounced in Isaac. Now it comes to the turn of Yaakub and his brother. Yahweh said, Yaakub I love. Esau, I hate it. This from Abba himself. So by that simple interpretation, Yaakub elevated. I mean, Abba elevated Yaakub over and above his brothers, his brother, Esau. That was done by Abba. Here again, you see how it, it, it play out again? Yaakub knew that Manasseh was the first son. But instead of him to Baruch Manasseh, he Baruch Ephraim. He turned and said, yeah, he's going to be blessed. Just like what Abba said to Ishmael, I'm going to bless him. 12 kings will come out of him. He's going to be blessed. But in your name, I mean, in Yisak, that your name is going to be proceed. Same thing that happened. Manasseh is going to be blessed. But Ephraim is going to be Israel. Ephraim will inherit you know, Abraham will be my firstborn. And this also interplay of the fact that Jacob did not forgive Reuben for what he did. He did not forgive him, Reuben. We have to be very, very careful. We have to be very, very careful when we are dealing with our parent, if our parent is still alive. Especially when we do something that touches, you know, death. He did not forgive him. And, and when we get to 49, we are going to see a lot of things. And Israel stretched out his right hand and lay it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Menashe's head consciously. You see, underline that, consciously directing his hand. He was consciously directing his hand, for Menashe was the firstborn. He, was, he knew what he was doing. Consciously, what he was doing at that time was to let Yosef, even though Yosef did not know, but what he was doing was to confirm, was to take away, to wreck completely from the hands of um, um, 
Reuben and give it to Manasseh. That was why he was so conscious. Consciously directing his, his hand at, you know, he was not just putting his hand on his head like that. See, if you have come across very old people when they are praying, when they are praying for you, they will not just lay your, their hands on you. They, that hand will be moving, will be moving on your head. <coughs> your, their hands will be moving on your head. And that, that has so deep meaning. That was what Yaakov was doing. He was at that particular point in time, you know, sharing Reuben into pieces for him to be able to confer the ownership of the land on Yosef through Yosef's seed. Don't forget, first of all, the first thing he did was to have elevated them to the level of their, of their, of, of their uncles. He brought them at the same part with their uncles. He did that. Secondly, was to have black Baruch them. Was to have played that the same thing within the two boys. And that thing, what he did was so was even the ass of Yosef. But his father told him. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel, will be blessed, saying, May Allah make you as Ephraim as, and, Man and as Manashe. And thus he set Ephraim before Manashe. He made that pronouncement on Ephraim first to set him above his brother. 48, verse 20. And I read. And he barak them on that day, saying, In your in you, Israel shall barak, saying, Elohim make you as Ephraim and as Manashe. Thus he put Ephraim before Manashe. And Israel said to Yosef, See, I'm dying. But Elohim shall be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Look at that, 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 that powerful words. See, I'm dying. Yeah, we will come back to that. But why would you know? I think that is if you go to the Jewish congregation, I think they used to, they have that uh, perverse kind of uh, blessing to their to 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 their sons too. And why was that? Do that? Why was um, Yaakub, Baruch, Manashe, sorry, uh, Baruch, Ephraim, and Manashe. The reason was the fact that although they were born into pagan, idolatrous culture of Misraim, they remain trustworthy to worship, to the worship of Elohim of Israel. Listen, although they were born into the pagan idolatrous culture of Misraim, they remain faithful to the worship of Yahuwah of Israel. And this is what we should desire for our children. Yosef lived in idolatrous society. You know, look at individual, the, the pinnacle of power. If it is today's society, you have to belong to the cult. If it's today, if you are not a Mason, you are not Illuminati, you are not a uh, um, um, skull and bones, you cannot become anything in this country and all over the world. And that is the truth. If you are not a member of Illuminati, you are not a member of Macy, you are not a member of Skull and Bone, they, and other you know, secret societies, you can become nothing. If you are trying to, to rise for that, they will bring you down or kill you. 
They will not even remember you, no matter how brilliant you are. But here, a man was in an idolatrous government, society, but yet set himself apart and apart for Yahweh Alahi of Israel. We are in a, in a wicked world, in a crooked world. We are in Babylon. We must consider all this to set ourselves apart from this world, from this present world. This is what we desire for our children, that despite being surrounded by a sea, this is what we should desire for our children. Despite being surrounded by a sea of questionable ethics and morality, they will grow up to be of good character, holding on to believe in the one true Allahim, worshiping him in, in Ruach and in truth, keeping the Torah that has been written on the heart of those who follow Yahusha Hamashiach. This is what we desire. I'm reading it again. This is what we desire for our children. That despite being surrounded by a sea of questionable ethics and morality, they will grow up to be of good character, holding on to belief in one true Yahuwah, worshiping him in Ruach and in truth, keeping the Torah that has been written on the heart of those who follow Yahusha HaMashiach. That is what we should desire for our children. Those of us that have grown up children, who we, there's nothing we can do about them again. We just commit their heart into Abba. But let us wait for our grandchildren and take our stand on our, on our grandchildren to make them to follow the way of Abba. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what will, what is the will of Yahweh is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Let's read Romans chapter 12. Sister Bala, welcome. Can you read Romans chapter 12, verse 2? Is Sister Bola there? I'm here. Yes, can you read uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, please? All right. Coming, so I'm opening. Okay. Oh. Romans twelve two. I have sunk in deep mud. Oh, where am I reading? Yeah, Romans chapter chapter Romans 12. 12. Yes, verse 2. I'm ready. Romans 12, 2. Okay. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you Proof what is the what is that good and well pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. Hallelujah. You want me to read three? No, no, no. It's okay. You see that even though Yosef was 
was at the pinnacle of power. He lived in an idolatrous society. He set his family apart. And he taught these children the way of Abba. And if you read the book of Yasha, you can see that um, Simeon and Yahuda, they, they, they knew that when Manasseh touches uh, Yahuda, he knew that this is his blood. He can relate immediately with Manasseh. Because when, when according to the book of Yasha, when um, Yahuda was so angry, he was so angry to pull down the root, the roof on everybody, Manasseh went to him and touched him. So when he did that, you know, his, his anger subsided. His anger came down immediately. So Manash, uh, Yahuda said, no, this must be my blood. Even when I don't know yet. The same thing he did to Simeon. So let us, let us, let us, let us strive hard to teach the Torah. Not even only to our children now. Let's teach the Torah to show people the way of Abba. Just like when our brother was given testimony um, on, on Thursday, he said the college uh, NFA or something that they, you cannot even pray. You dare not to pray. That was a wonderful testimony that he gave on Thursday. Let us teach our children the way of Abba. So through his blessing, Yaakov elevated these two grandsons to be on equal level, I've said it, with his own sons. Manasseh and Ephraim became leader of their own tribes, representing the house of Yosef, receiving their own portion of land and waving of flags. You will discover that Nobody heard anything about Yosef's children apart from Manasseh and, uh, and uh, Ephraim, Ephraim and Manasseh. They became a tribe to represent you because you remember, Yaakov said he's going to give Yosef two portions. So Yosef received two portions of the land, of the land from Yaakov, their father. And that is Manasseh and Ephraim. And to, to, to crown it all, when you talk of Israel, you have to mention, you talk of Manasseh. Because Manasseh received the land of Israel. So it was Manasseh, I'm sorry, um, Ephraim. It was Ephraim that was scattered which are called Israel, scattered all over the world. He received the portion. He elevated them to the same level with their uh, cousins. I mean, sorry, with their uncles. Manasseh and Ephraim became leader of their own tribe, representing the house of Yosef receiving their own portion of land and waving of the flag. They became a nation within the nation. That was the blessing from Yaakov. Let's go to um, Bereshit 49. Yaakov, prophetic blessings over the 12 tribe. I tattoo you Yaakov, prophetic blessings over the 12 tribes. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so Brother Anderson, you are going to read from um, verse one, chapter 49, 49 to nine. 
And Sister Shadola will read from from ten, from ten to um twenty, from ten to twenty. Then um, Sister Bola will read from twenty one, from twenty one to twenty seven. Where are then, we reading, sir? Um, better sheet forty nine. Better sheet forty nine. That is the Torah portion. So twenty seven to the end. Sister Shannon, we read from twenty seven to end. So, so Brother Anderson, one or forty seven. Forty nine. That is, we read from forty from forty nine. Okay. Yeah, then you will start reading from uh, um sorry. This is confusing me now. Okay. Um brother Anderson will read from one to ten. One to ten now. Okay, you move me up one. All right, one to ten. <laughs> okay. Now, listen, listen, let me one to ten. Okay. Then Sister Shadula will read from eleven. He will, she will read from eleven to twenty two. Then Sister Bola will read from 23 to um, 28. Then Sister Shannon will read from 29, you know, to the end. Okay, and Yaakov called to his sons and he said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. And he gathered himself together and hear you, my son Yaakov, and hearken unto Israel your father, and Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and my beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thy went up unto thy father's bed, and he follows thou it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levon are brethren, instruments of cruelty, and there in their habitation, O oh my soul, come not, not thou unto their secret, unto their assembly, my honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Curse be their anger, for it was furious, and in their wrath it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies, and thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion of wealth from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rise him up? A more. The serpent shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver between his feet, until Shula comes, until him shall the gathering of his people be. Binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washed his garment in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are dark than, darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. Zabulun dwells at the seashore. He is a haven for ships, and his border is unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong donkey, lying down between two burdens. And he saw that a resting place was good, and that the land was pleasant. And he inclined his shoulder to bear a burden and became a subject to slave labor. Dan rightly rules his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan is a serpent, by the way, an adder by the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider falls backward. I have waited for your deliverance, O Yahweh. God, a raiding band, raids him, but he raids its heel. Bread from Ashur is rich, and he gives delicacies of a sovereign. 
Naftali is a deer let loose. He gives word of elegance. Yosef is an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree, an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree by a fountain. His branches run over a wall. Okay. Sister Bola? Yes, sir. Yeah, you read from 23 to, 23 to 27. To 27. Oh, 28. Yes. Okay. Oh, 28. Okay, yeah, 28. 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. I mean, 27. Okay. And the archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength, and the hands of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty ones, one of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, from the heir of your father, who helps you, and by the almighty who bless you with blessings of the heavens from above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessings of your father, have a zeal and blessings of my ancestor up to the limits of the everlasting hill. They are on the head of Yosef and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brother. Benjamin is a wolf that tears in the moving he, morning. He eats prey, and, and at night he divides the spoil. Amen. Amen. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it that their father spake unto them, and blessed them, every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Marim, and in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought, bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittites, of the possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife, there they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife, and there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and the cave that is therein was from the ch children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghosts and was gathered unto his people. Hallelujah. Here we see Yaku call, call his sons and, and he said, Come to me together, that I may tell you what is what is going to befall you in the end of days. Assemble and listen, O sons of Yaku, and listen, Israel, your father. Listen to Israel, your father. This is very, very interesting. It is interesting in the sense that here, an old man, a very old man, was about to depart this world. And he called his children to himself. We should remember that Yaakov called his sons and he said, come to me. And here, Jacob, of course, did not only bless his grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh, he also gathered his children together and tell them what is going to happen in, in his bed, in his dead bed. You see, we get to understand the meaning of prophecy here. Time may not permit me to go into that. See, the concept and definition of prof prophecy, it is not what we made to understand today. It's not. 
Now, in speaking words, now Jacob gathered them together at his bed. And this happened, you know, in ancient, I say ancient, in ancient Africa, where when your 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 parent, when they're about to sleep, when they're about to die, they will gather all the, their children together and barack them and pray for them. So the same thing Jacob was doing here. He gathered them together as bed and he revealed to them what is going to happen to them. And the blessings were carefully constructed and appropriate to the individuals. Yaakov carefully constructed the, the, the Beraha, the blessings. And he appropriated that blessing into individuals. They were often based on the past behavior that was projected beyond the life of these sons to their descendants. Yaakov said, he started from his first son. He started with his first son, Reuben. You are my first son, my firstborn. My power and the beginning of my strength. So, you are my power, the beginning of my strength. That is to say that Reuben came at the time when Yaku was full of strength and power. And the beginning of my strength and the excellency of my exhortation and the excellency of power. You see, he came at the time when he was full of life. That's what he's saying. You know when you when you when you when you have your children when you are very young okay it comes at that particular time it comes with vigor with strength with power with so much energy that was what Yaakov was saying here that Reuben you are my son you are my firstborn my power and the beginning of my strength the excellency of exhortation and the excellency of power unstable as water you see it you do not excel because you went up to your father's bed then you defile it he went up to my couch Ouch. he never forgive him so Ruben, he did not give him the double portion of a preeminence that is usually reserved for the first sons. And because of Reuben's instability, instead, the double portion was given to the children of Yosef. Now, what was Reuben's behavior? Reuben's behavior was the fact that Reuben went to his father's couch. He slept with Beha, his father's son. It is just it's going be it 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 it, it, it goes beyond just having sex with his father's son. I mean, with his father's uh, wife. What he did was to have stayed a coup, a coup d'état against his father. He wanted to take over. He wanted to take over the 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 government of, of of his father's house even while his father was alive that is what they meant let's go to second melahim second king second melahim no sorry first melahim first melahim first king chapter two Chapter two from verse, I mean, sorry, um, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get my, um, yes. First King chapter two, 
1 to 12. Can somebody read it? Well, if you find it, read it, please. And the days King of the wood, and the days of the wood draw near to die. Yes. And he commanded Shilomog, his son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth, and you shall be strong, and be a man, and guard the charge of Yah, your Elohim, to walk in his ways, to guard his laws, his commands, the right rulings, and his witnesses, as it is written in the Torah of Moshe, so that you do wisely all that you do, and wherever you turn, so that Yah does establish his word, which he spoke according to me, saying, if your son guide thy way, thy way, if your son guide thy way to walk before me in truth with all their hearts and with all their being, saying, there is not to seize a man of yours on the throne of Israel. And also you know what Yoab, son of Turuya, did to me and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, son of Nan, and Amasa, son of Yeta, that he killed them and shed the blood of battle in peace and put the blood of battle on his belt that was around his waist and on his sandals that were on his feet. So act according to your wisdom and do not let his gray hair go down to Sheol in peace, but show loving commitment to the sons of Basilia, the Giladites, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For so they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your brother, and see with you, see Shimon, son of Gerah, the Bayamite from Bahurim, who cursed me with a grievous cursing in the day when I went to Mayanaim, but he came down to meet me at the Yadin, and, and I swore to him by Yah, saying, I shall not put you to death with a sword, and now do not leave him unpunished. You, for you are a wise man, and know what you should do to him, and shall bring his gray hair down to Sheol with, his, with the blood. And David slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven, seven years in Hebron, and Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years. And Shalomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his reign was firmly established. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, exactly Hallelujah. this is what, what Yaku did is what Dawood or Dauda did. He, he, when he was about to die, he called Solomon and told him, I'm going the way of all the earth. You see, this place actually dismisses the false, the lies of a Christian going to heaven. I'm going the way of all the earth, and you shall be strong and be a man and guide the charge of Yahuwah, your Elohim. He gave the instruction to Shalomah to guide the instruction of Yahuwah Elohim and to walk his ways, to guide his laws, his command, his right ruling, and his witnesses, as it is written in Torah of Moshe, so that you do wisely all that you do, wherever you turn. So he gave it just like Yaku was giving instruction to his children, telling them about what is going to happen to them. The same thing here, that Wood was telling Solomon that I'm commanding you to guide the commandment of Yahweh, that if you guide the commandment of Yahweh, this is what is going to happen to you. 
in future. But let's go to verse 13. Verse 13. And Adoniyahu, that Adoniyahu was one of the sons of Hagit, came to Beersheba, the mother of King Shalomon, and she said, do you come in peace? And he said, peace. And he said, I have a word for you. And she said, speak. And he said, you know that the rain was mine, and all Israel has turned their face toward me, that I should rain, but the rain has been turned around and has become my brother. For it was his from Yahuwah. And now I'm making one request of you. Do not refuse me. And she said to him, say it. And he said, please speak to sovereign Shalomon, for he will not refuse you to give me Abshag, the, the Shunammites as wife. And Bathsheba said, good, let me speak to you, to the sovereign. Now, I want us to capture here. Okay, this guy went to the mother of Shalom, and he lay back before her and said, you know, this throne belongs to me. But my father decided otherwise, just like what Jacob did. He decided otherwise. He gave the double portion that's supposed to go to uh, Reuben. He gave it to uh, the children of Yosef. Uh, um, um, now, he went further. And he said, then she said, and then the sovereign Solomon, okay. Then he now said, Bathsheba came to the sovereign. I'm in 18 now. And Bathsheba said, good, let me speak to you, to the sovereign. And Bathsheba came to the sovereign Solomon to speak to him for the Adoniyahu. And sovereign rose up to meet her and bowed down to her and sat down on his throne and had a throne put for the sovereign mother. So she sat at his right hand and she said, I'm making one small request of you. Do not refuse me. And the sovereign said to her, ask my mother, for I do not refuse you. Then she said, let Abishag, the Shunammite, be given to Adonayahu, your brother, as a wife. Now listen to the, 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 the response of Solomon. And Solomon and the sovereign Solomon answered and said to his mother, now why do you ask Abishag, the Shunammite, for Adonayahu, for for i mean as for him the rain also for he's my older brother for him and to the ebiata the kohen and for you as you have the son of Sheruya. you see the response of of solomon why are you asking because what solomon is trying to establish here is that you see that woman represent the throne because that was the wife of his father so if Abishag, I mean, if, um, what is his name? Adoniyahu, you know, married Abishag. Simply, what it simply means is that the power has been transisted from Shalomon to Abiyahu because he inherited his father. This is what, um, this is what Reuben did. That is about power. By going into his stepmom to sleep with her, what 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 he was saying is that I'm going to. He cannot wait till where his father died. I'm going to absorb the power from my father. So Jacob saw that it go beyond just ordinary sex. It has to do with power. So Jacob saw that he, what his first son did is worse than death. Because when you go into your father's bed, not only do you define it, but that you have as uh, you know taken power away from him when he was still even alive. So, and he paid dearly for his character uh, for his actions same also did adonia who not pay for it adonia was killed shaloman understand the meaning the implication of what he was asking for so when you marry a woman 
that belongs to your father. What you are saying in essence, because is it the, the custom is almost it is is just the same as our culture. You cannot sleep with your father. Why? When, even when it's no more, you know, alive. Even when you take over as a king. Yes, it's, it's part of the women in the palace. That is all. That is that is all. It's an excellency of power for you to have your father, wife in the palace. I'm from a royal home. I know what that meant. It's your duty to take care of them. That is the excellency of power. But in this case, he observed the power of his father by going in to sleep with his uh, stepmom. And we saw the consequences of that ambition. And he paid dearly for it. His children paid dearly for, for that singular act that he did. He did this because Reuben slept with Jacob's wife, Bilha, which revealed his loss for power over the family. In other words, when Reuben took possession of his father's harem, it revealed an attempt to absorb his authority. For this reason, Jacob resisted giving Reuben a position. He resisted giving Reuben a position of preeminence. In his family and that is what he did he resisted uh ruben he said he that if you when i was saying that when he was he was given he was a uh, blessing uh um uh ephraim the scripture said he he guided his hand consciously what he was doing was to have tear into pieces the preeminence of ruben in israel if not because Moshe that prayed for Reuben, Reuben tribe would have been forgotten completely in Israel. So we have to be very, very careful. Very, 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 very careful. Then he went for that to Shimon too. He went for that to Shimon and Lua, uh, um Let's read, let's go, let's go, let's read 49. We are in 49, verse 5. What did he say? He says, Shimon, Shimon and Lu are brothers. Their weapons, their weapons are implement of violence. Let my being not enter their council. Let my esteem not be united to their assembly, because they slew a man in their displeasure and they and the lame and ox in 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 pleasure you see simeon and lou their brothers their blood so jacob was saying that if they united if i allow them to to be together if i allow them if i leave them in israel they will tear <laughs> you know they will tear his children to pieces because of their anger. So I will not allow that to happen. Because they are brother, they are blood. They are the same blood. Semen. They may be even be twins. Because Jacob said they are brothers. I remember my, my two boys who are twins. <laughs> they always call themselves brothers. They are brothers. See, what the aid we do is what the be we also do. So Jacob said here, I sincerely believe that Shimon and Luz are twins, because that's what Jacob said. They are brothers. And he said their weapons are implement of violence. So let my being, let my nefesh, not my nefesh, don't allow my nefesh to rest in their cancer. Because if that happens, they will destroy my house. 
And he said, let my being not enter their council. Let my sin not be united for the assembly because they slew a man. And look at it. He was not even happy, not because they slew a man, but because they, 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 they killed innocent animals. See? They kill innocent animals. And he said, cause be their displeasure. For it is fierce and their wrath, for it is cruel. I divide them in Yaakov and scatter them in Israel. See, even though a land was given to Simeon, it was a very little portion that was given to Simeon. Very little. But you don't even hear of that ethnic group, you know, that tribe. What of Lu? <laughs> even though they are inheritance of Abba, he scattered them in Israel. All of them, part of them are with Yehuda, all the tribe of Israel, he scattered them. They are, you know, uh, um, Kohenim. They were scattered. He caused that he was very angry with their behavior. He was, he did not, you know, he wasn't satisfied with that behavior. So when Yahu blessed Simon and Lou, he caused their anger for their role in massacre on session. After Yaakov's daughter, dinner was raped. You know what, what the circumstances that led to that? Their, their sister was raped and they 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 they, they, they seek revenge. Though their anger was a fitting response, their anger was a fitting response, it was not a righteous anger. They treat the men of Sheshem into a false peace agreement and use it as a strand to kill them. You know what, you know what 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 get Yaakov ang angry was the fact that the the they use the, the word of the covenant of Abba to trick these people. <laughs> you know, the covenant of Abba, that is what get Yaakub wrath. Because they use the covenant of Abba to lie, just as a lot of pastors are using the name of Abba to lie today. They use the name of Abba to lie, to exhort money from people today. A lot of teachers. The same thing, this is what they did. They took them. So before we can give our daughter, our sister to you, you have to circumcise. That is Abba's covenant. You have to circumcise. And these people actually, Jacob thought that when you said that to them and they carry out your instruction, they shouldn't have been killed. But they went at the most painful period of these people when they're experiencing gruelly pains. That is when uh, Simeon and Lou strike and they kill, they wipe them out. So he said, no, I, I will not allow them to be together in Israel. <laughs> they can conspire to destroy <laughs> my children. So he scattered them. He scattered them in Israel. So they also pay for their characters. They also pay for their actions. Their violent, their violence was so excessive that they even hamstrung the oxen. So we have seen, we have seen how other sons were blessed. We are going to continue that tomorrow. How other sons were blessed with beauty, with fertility, with with um. Uh, um, the, the stiffness of deer, ferocious, ferociousness of war, like Benjamin, then the, scholar, the scholarship of Yisak, the scholastic of Yisak, the military might of God. We are going to continue tomorrow as Abba uh, permit. We just thank Abba today for this wonderful um, uh, Torah. As I said, uh, this is the the last Torah portion for um, January. 
uh, I mean, sorry, yes, no, no. The lateral portion for the book of uh, Bereshit, Genesis. And um, we will continue to round it up tomorrow uh, as Abba will permit. So I will say to you, Haza, Haza, Haza. Be strong, be strong, be strong. We are going to continue that tomorrow as Abba uh, willing. I yield the floor for questions and contribution. Our praise to the Most High. We thank Him for this session. It was uh, this poor session. Yes, definitely a blessing. Um, we thank Him for your obedience and your submission to Him yeah. to. Um, what he has given to you. Uh, I do have a contribution. Um, so I was thinking about chapter 49, uh, okay. verse seven, where it speaks on Shimeon and, and Lu um, are scattered yes. among Israel. And um, as, as I was reading that, um, this is just what came to mind. Um, not necessarily a definite, but it did come to mind um, that they will not, they will not be leaders and we see that uh, along the line in scripture where they don't really have a lead position either one of them um in um israel um but in fact by um by the words of their father it put them it put both of them in a position to um permanently serve and as we see that um we know that levi um was scattered amongst the uh, Israel, uh, amongst the, the Southern Kingdom and the Northern Kingdom, um, but they never had real positions per se of leadership, um, but they did serve and Abba, you know, gave them their portion. They didn't have their own land. And so I, I look at things like that and I'm like, you know, the situation that occurred with their sister and the act that they, pursued in um came from a place of it was emotion but it was also pride because they could have had that conversation with their father and come up with a solution even though he did not respond we saw that he didn't respond um as i don't feel like he did he responded as quickly or accurately as we would have liked but nonetheless, they could have come up with a better solution and from that um, caused themselves to be in a position of pride to make an action. And I feel like this scattering amongst these two specifically put them in a permanent position of service to the to the others, which would be Yehuda and the Northern Kingdom, whichever parts of, of Lou went there um, and as a place of humility permanently humbling them that's my that's my thought that's what came to my mind the second is um in chapter 48 verse 7 um i noticed that yaakov tells yosef of where his mother is buried and 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 in thoughts of that i thought while i was thinking about it i was like why did he why was he reminding Yosef of where his mother was buried? Um, and, and in my notes, I put, I assume um, that he is mentioning this, making mention of this to Yosef so that he would tend to that, you know, that specific place. Because, you know, after all, Yosef was 17 when he left, you know, when his, when his, you know, his mother passed after having been, been yaman and was buried but then all this time passed and then there's this little passage there where Yaakov speaks to Yosef and says you know your mother is buried here and then um we go down to uh chapter 49 which gives me an answer as to the question that I had in chapter 48 of verse 7. chapter 49 verse 31 um states that Yaakov buried Leah 
in the cave where his father and his mother was buried and also where his grandfather Abraham and Sarah was buried. Um, and so I, when I'm looking at that, I thought, wow, you know, um, although he didn't love Leah as much as Raquel, he honored her at the end of it all. She was buried in the very cave with his mom, his dad, his grandfather, his grandmother, and where he would also be buried. And I wrote in my notes here that I believe this is, you know, I believe that it was also Abba honoring Leah. And um, that we must, we must understand that when Abba favors us, no matter what others think, he will position us in honor, even in death. And that is what Abba did at the end of it all between the two sisters, uh, one not being so loved, um, but was loved by Abba. Even though her husband didn't love her as much as he loved her, so Abba kept his eyes on her. Abba remembered her. And at the end of it all, Abba favored her and put her in the very position with the, the forefathers and the foremothers and also in death and position with her, her ish. So I just thought that was just phenomenal. Those things just really resonated with me. Um, and I just wanted to share that. So I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really, really, um, you know, um, like that portion of it, um, of the of this scripture that you pointed to. I think I've read some a, a commentary a, um, along that which actually um one the, the the commentator was saying that um because it got to a point where leah recognizes that if i continue to hold on to my husband that was when uh yahuda came if i continue to hold on to my husband he is going to be a stumbling block between me I'm a, and, 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 uh, and Abba. So let me just decrease my love for him. I show it to him, but he doesn't return it back to me. And let me give all my love, all my praises to Yahweh. So, and the commentator said, but that singular action of Leah, that it makes Abba to favor her more. And they said that she was so humble that even when she was unloved by her husband, she devoted everything to Yaakov and to the house of Israel. Everything that she got, she gave it to the house of Israel. So that was what actually, according to commentators, it said it was. Abba that even put it in the heart of um, um, Yaakov to bury her in that place. And again, when Leah was leaving her father place, he never touched on Clinton. And she never looked back again. She, just like what Ruth said, you know, your Elohim will be my Elohim. Your um, your land will be my land. That is what she did. That was not the case with Rahel. Rahel took her father's mighty ones when she was living, and I think and because she doesn't know that even her husband was a a a, a, a navi when he said to her father. That anyone you see is going to die. And Abba passed judgment when she was having Benjamin. And Abba dishonored her. That was why she was not buried in that place. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I yield the floor again. Brother Anderson, Sister Bola, 
Sister Shalom. I want to say, Sister Shalola, truly, what you said is a, is a great one. And I reason so much about that. And this brings me to Brother Anderson's testimony. I listened to your testimony, Brother Anderson, and the other testimony. I was deeply moved. At a point, I feel like I was in your shoe. And I was like, moving and have, having a kind of a, a goose feeling, like as if I'm there. But I see that in everything that we went through in life, we are fortunate if it leads us to Abba. That is what I've seen in the life of Leah. Leah went through unloved situation. And his, our opinion is not matter. Whatever I, is going on with her, the husband is not looking at her side. And it makes his children to be not what she wanted them to be. Because the children also saw what their mother is going through. And they wanted to, re they rebelling. And they were not acting fine. It's very painful when you go through a situation where you are not loved, where you did everything. But my joy at the end, as Sister Shadola said, and like our brother uh, Anderson testimony, he led both of them to Abba. And that is one thing I want to take away from this, that no matter the situation, if we give the situation to Abba, everything will work for our good. And it will end in praise. So I love that. And for me, I've been Abba has been leading me to my roots. And it's been making me happy. When I read this portion, verse 12 said of 49, his eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. And he was the king, he was given the rulership. And I could see my brother, Ola. You see, we, 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 we used to have joke among black, black among ourselves. We say, ah, black people, the only thing you see in them is their eyes and their teeth. <laughs> you will see nothing <laughs> other than their milk teeth. And we are really blessed with having teeth. If my brother all has mine now, even though we cannot see his face very well, that milk teeth will come out. Can you smile? I brother see. Ola. I <laughs> smile. <now. laughs> and I note in my book, I said, This is a black man. And I begin to see my husband like he look at he looked like Abraham. And I one day I told him that, hey, you look like Father Abraham. We are, this is us. We might be the blind Israelites. This it might be the time of Gentile, and we are still blind. We couldn't get our way back to Abba. And this is the way I see the race, the black race. Look like all of us in Africa and blacks, our eyes are blind. That we are true Israelites. We are the children, we are the people that Abba loved. And if you look at the whole world, we are hated. And we are not loved. Is our blind time, and it's the time of Gentile. We, by the by, by, by Yah's grace, as we are coming to know Him, we will, we will see Him at last. We will reign finally with Him. And I, and I begin to read, and I begin to see as I begin to read this portion, I begin to see. That it says in verse 9, Yehuda is a lion's club. From the prey you have gone up, my son. That is how we are to the heart of Abba. And I really give praise to Abba for what he's doing, especially in me this day, taking me back to my roots. I sent a coin that we, we used to have back, back in the day. I sent to Brother Ola this morning. He used to have star, star of David. 
even though you were, it was given to us by our uh, by our colonial masters. But they recognized back in the days that who, this is who we are, even though we have lost our identity and we could no longer recognize who we are anymore. But truly, brother and sister, I'm happy to tell you again, I believe some of you must have heard it before, because Sister Chilola has been telling me that Yorubas, and we are, they used to tell us that we are king's children. Brother Ola can testify to this. All Yoruba, one of my lady, Niwa, Abisa. Yes, Omalade. yes. Omalade means that um, the people that came from king kingship, we are all prince and princesses. And my Abba is just taking me back to seek and seek my root. And I, when I read to this place, I'm so happy to see my brother Ola's darker eyes like wine and his teeth whiter than <laughs> milk. That's really encouraged me and making me to know that truly I'm from Yehuda's tribe and I'm, I'm one of daughters of Abraham. I'm really happy. And marrying our father's wife, we don't let father's wife go. Anybody that died in the family, we have the culture of these people. That is our culture to marry the brother's wife, the father's wife. They, we don't let them suffer. There's no widow like that in the land of Yoruba. But when we, they begin to colonize us, all our culture are beginning to erase and get, a, get away from us. We don't have widow. Every widows were married with the brothers of brothers that, that is an, alive. I pray to wherever Abba is taking us to, as we are giving it to Abba like Leah and like Brother Anderson, we will get to where Abba wants us to get to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. I Sister am... Shabbat, Brother Anderson. Yes, here I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, well, uh, 4910. Well, I like okay. to uh, talk in, in terms of before that, when you're talking in terms of um, how Joseph was a provider and things of that nature and how we should have our own uh, resources of food and how to prepare. And what we should do is prepare for the coming times because this is basically a prophecy. And like you were saying that he got his children together because it's a prophecy as well. You know, to let them know what's going to happen in the later days or the latter days. Uh, also, um, I like 49.10, the rod of authority will not be taken from Judah. He will not be without a lawgiver until he comes who has the right to it. And the people will put themselves under his rule. So this is like a prophecy talking about the Messiah when he comes. Now he should be a you know a, a lawgiver, and this is a very deep prophecy. Will back way back here in Genesis pertaining to the coming uh, uh, Messiah. So and also is one more. I'm going to be short. Uh, there was one where I guess when he when he comes to his the time of his death, it reminds me of my own dad. Um, he knew that it was time for him to depart. Uh, I, I believe um, the, uh, my, my father, when he was getting ready to pass away, well, we came over and he took him in the ambulance and so forth like that. And while he was in the ambulance state, um, he was trying to get his pulse, but they couldn't find his pulse. And when it got to the hospital, um, he was telling my sister continuously, take my rings off. He said, well, why do you want your rings off? He said, I'm going to die. And he kept repeating that, to take my rings off because I'm going to die. And he said, well, why do you think you're going to die? He said, because they could not find my pulse. So he knew at that particular time that he was going to depart from this earth. Like manner, you know, when Jacob or Joseph, was it Jacob or Joseph? When he was getting ready to, to pass away, that he got his people together. And then when he finished talking, he pulled his feet up from the bed and he gave up the ghost. So there's a, a, a acknowledgement of in some people where they're going to, you know, depart from this earth. I just hope that we as a people don't depart until we complete the duties what Abba put before us. That's my little short verse. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I'll, I'll be treating very well. Um, 
Yahuda tomorrow because it's so deep, it's so loaded. Yahuda is loaded very well. So we are going to treat that more tomorrow. Thank you, Brother Anders, uh, Anderson, for, for that wonderful contribution. Sister Shannon, I want to hear from you. Yes, yes. Um, in the very beginning of it, when um, when it was talking about how basically Egypt got everybody's land, got everybody's cattle, and now everyone has to work for Pharaoh, it kind of, like we, I already understood that Egypt in Mizraim is a reflection of America and what the society we live in today. Um, but it just gave me a deeper understanding because that's exactly how our government works. And they take money out of our chicks for whatever it is that they need and all that um, good stuff and just put in more importance on like why it's why it's so crucial that we we get our own and start going back to the way things were um, so that when the famine comes, you know, we could be the ones that's like, hey, hand me your cow and I'll give you some food, you know, something. Uh, so it's just that was just um you know something that stood out to me and then also the vow how the vow was made like put your hand under my thigh and how the symbolism behind it and how important it really is and i personally i really love symbolism and i love um the significance of different things because everything in this word has a deeper meaning um than just at face value um, and I, I just like how it got broken down and revealed that this is something that you don't take lightly. And this is something that you have to um, honor and be in support of for the rest of your life or your own life is going to be taken from you. Um, and just understanding um, the culture more. Uh, I really like that. Okay. I'd like to also go back to that verse again and I have a different um, interpretation where it says the serpa shall not depart from Yehuda, nor the Torah, using here Torah, given from between his feet until Shalom comes and until him shall the gathering of the people be. That's more of a, a good concept of what it's talking in terms of, you know. So that's like a real nice deep uh prophecy dealing with you know the savior coming and gathering his people hallelujah um when the sister shannon talked about the symbol we don't pay attention to symbols we don't pay attention to all kinds of symbols that you know we see um in different places even in 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 most of the most of these uh, congregations see symbolism is 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 it, 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 it explains something that's more deeper that we don't even understand what it is i bought a book called science and symbols i was looking for me from my little library i don't know where i kept it maybe it's inside my car i bought it for me to be able to understand different symbolism simple different symbols that ordinary we don't pay attention to so just like when what i um uh, what, what i when i was explaining the time that's a powerful symbol it, it, it is so powerful that it touches the you know the center of your heart Take an oath, and it, it's an oath. Take an oath with my time that you are going to be truthful to me. You are going to do this. It's life, and it's life forever, and power too. So that is what Yaakov made um, um, Yosef to do. That if I die, don't bur bury me here. You take me back to. My, our land, Israel, where my fathers are. That's where you bury me. So let's 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 see how, you know, how Abba, I mean, through the Torah, is explaining a lot of things that ordinarily we wouldn't have known. Like for instance, I was doing research on Yahuda, the sculptor. Look, 
I didn't even know the significance of the scepter, the rod. That rod symbolizes authority and power. And I'm going to explain that tomorrow. Because this is in my in, in, in my family because of how I where I came. If you don't have that symbol of authority, if you are, if you become a king and you don't have that that rod in your hand, you don't have nothing. So it makes me to understand very well when Yaakub was talking to um uh, Yahuda. So we are going to do that tomorrow. So I just thank you so much, you know, for your contribution. This is I love our talk. You know, I always wait for Sabbath or our Torah portion because all of you are so loaded. You have the ruach of Abba in you that we learn from one another. We benefit from one another, and I'm so I'm so happy. I'm really really so happy. The kind of people Abba is bringing to the Torah the way, the Asian part, you know, people who are ready, who are prepared to be part of the kingdom of Abba. And I pray that Abba will continue to uh, hold us very strongly, bring us to himself more and more and more, just like Yaakov invited his uh, grandkids to come closer to him. I pray that Abba will bring us more closer, closer to him so that we continue to see the beauty that is in torah we continue to see the light of abba in our lives that is going to shine and it's going to overcome every darkness every obstacles that is in our way thank you so much for this wonderful um um shabbat um service and torah study so by Abba's uh, willing, tomorrow we will actually conclude Genesis and move to the next on the um, next Sabbath. We are going to be in Shemot. Uh, we have, we ask uh, Sister Shadola to pray for us. The closing prayer. Abba Yahuwah, we just come before you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you so much for this time that we have had together. Thank you so much for the, uh, the Torah that has been left for us to eat from, to learn from, to grow from, be strengthened from. Thank you for our forefathers and foremothers that came before us, Abba, and um, opened up the path for us, Abba. We know that prayers were going forth for us in this generation before we even got here. And so we thank you for releasing your, your malak to come into this dispensation of time and be with us on our journeys. Thank you, Most Highest, for the vessel that you used to bring forth the teaching. Thank you for the exuberation of your essence that comes through him. And we know that he has spent time with you because of all that is coming forth out of him. We just ask that you continue to download and to pour into him more of what you desire as he pours out and releases. And we pray for every um, one on this platform today, in each one, every one of our lives, Abba, where you are present and you are with us, you are speaking to us, you are helping us on our journeys as individuals and collectively. And, and it shows when we come together and this is what pleases you. And so we thank you um, that you and you by your Ruach is letting us know that you're with us and that you are pleased on, of, of what's taking place here. And we pray that we will continue to please you as we are obedient to you, as we are taking from what you give to us in, in um, your way, your mind, um, your mind. Uh, we can only know your mind if you reveal it to us. And so thank you for favoring us, for, for trusting us with your heart and your mind um, as much as we can handle, Abba. Continue to circumcise our hearts and our minds as we uh, transform into the full 
likeness of the imagery of who you are in your essence. And we know that that is over a period of time, but each time that we are with you is a part of our transformation. So we thank you for that most highest. We thank you that if you allow our eyes to see another day, that we will convene tomorrow and complete the tour portion about a sheet. And we thank you of what is waiting for us, the gift of goodness in you that is waiting for us, that you're going ahead. If you show, if, if it is your will that we should see another day, that you go ahead and you just, you, 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 you spread forth your blessing of goodness upon us. So as we leave this particular space, we just ask that you continually uh, cover us with your shalom. For the Shabbat is made to bring us to wholeness and restoration. And, and I believe, I know I have experienced restoration today. And I have experienced uh, another level of wholeness. And I'm sure that my brothers and sisters have as well. So thank you for this beautiful Shabbat. Um, of wholeness and thank you um, for a rest. We just, we we pray that we all have good sweet sleep tonight, Abba. And then in whatever, uh, at whatever way you choose to speak to us in the dream world, Abba, uh, that we will be conscious and attentive and understand what you're saying, bring forth the understanding and clarity of what you are saying to us. We give you all the glory for you alone are Elohim and you alone are worthy. And we thank you. We bless your holy name, Yahuwah. We bless the name of Yahusha. And it is a blessing for those of us who come in the name above all names, Yahuwah. We give thanks. Amen. 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 We thank Abba. Amen. Amen. Amen.